Welcome back to Tech by Pike. It's been a while since we posted our last video. We took some time off after the holiday and then I had to focus on some projects for my day job and it really didn't allow time for me to create or post videos. But we're back now and uh, for our first videos of this year we're going to be looking at the new M2 MacBook Pros that were just released recently. Uh, we got the 14 inch and the 16 inch. Um, they both are spec'd out the same. They both have the M2 Max chip. They both have uh, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte SSD. Um, we are going to focus on the 16 inch MacBook Pro M2 for this video. And we'll get back to the 14 inch in a later video. I want to do some comparisons and also comparisons from last year's model. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go over the specs and then we're going to unbox this uh, MacBook Pro M2 16 inch. And then I'm going to have some initial thoughts at the end. Let's get into it. The 14 inch and 16 inch M2 MacBook Pro come in an array of different iterations based on your need and your pocketbook. Um, we're going to focus on the 16 inch. If you get the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip, uh, you can spec it up to 32 gigs of unified memory. Uh, you get a 12 core CPU, but you can spec it up to a 19 core GPU, and that will support up to two external displays. If you go with the M2 MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip, Still comes with that 12 core CPU, but you can spec it up to 38 core GPU. And you can also get up to 96 gigs of unified memory. Uh, and I'm sure there is a use case for that. And then you could also uh, purchase up to eight terabytes of internal uh, SSD storage for both uh, the M2 Pro and M2 Max. And with the M2 Max, you can, it supports up to four external displays. So that's good news. Uh, the 16 inch liquid retina display on this particular laptop. It's an XDR with ProMotion. It uh, has a thousand nits of sustained brightness and 1600 nits of peak brightness. Apple boasts uh, that the 16 inch uh, can go up to 22 hours of video playback and up to 15 hours of wireless web browsing. And they also boast that the M2 Max and M2 Pro over the M1 previous versions uh, are beat out the, um, beat them out for video editing. And if you're a content creator, uh, that's good news. Uh, they also boast that there's a 20% performance boost on both the M2 chips, the Pro and the Max over the M1. So uh, we'll be doing some synthetic uh, benchmarking later in this video. So anyway, let's go ahead and go to the unboxing. And then like I said, we'll do some benchmarking. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and unbox this thing. Um, I will say that um, I started to unbox it, but I forgot that my microphone wasn't on. And so I had to uh, put a th few things back and start over again. So we already pulled the tabs uh, off this box to open it up. But here you see 32 gigs of unified memory, one terabyte SSD. It's the 16 inch MacBook Pro uh, M2 Max chip. So start this over and open this guy up so. and you notice that I pulled this out already but I didn't pull the wrapping off and here's the cable and you'll notice that um, I got this space gray here uh, color and uh, the uh, mag safe uh, connector here for uh, power uh, is also the same color, so that's a nice little touch, nice braided cable, nice and long. So we'll put that off to the side, we're going to open this up. And they put a huge spacer in this packet here, uh, I guess a filler, but we'll pull this out. Stickers here uh, that nobody uses, but uh, I have a collection. Then underneath that is a safety and handling sheet, and then here is the instructions, uh, some things about your MacBook, your new MacBook. Nice to have. Put these back later. And then here is the power brick 
and uh, this one is 140 watts, nice and big. All right, let's take that out. Let's go ahead and open up the laptop here. this out of the way. We're going to open this up and automatically it's going to turn on like usual. Move that out of the way. Okay, the uh, keyboard deck is nice. It's no different from last year's model. Keyboard, it's probably one of the best keyboards I've ever typed on. Trackpad is nice and smooth and classy, and it's large. Love the trackpad. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, the screen, there's no screen wobble. Uh, it has a 1080p camera, um, like last year. Let's check out the I.O. here. Uh, we have the MagSafe. We have the two Thunderbolt 4s, and then we have a headphone jack. Looks like we have some venting here. Um, and then on the other side, we have the full-size SD card slot, another Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4, uh, more venting, and then we have the HDMI 2.1, that is new, I think last year it was 2.0. And then in the back here, we have some more venting. And underneath here, we have the two four rubber feet, and then you have the screws to uh, get into the laptop, lift this bottom plate, we're not going to do that. Um, very nice, sturdy built, just like last year. Uh, you know, there is some changes around the specs, uh, which you heard about. It does have Wi-Fi 6E, uh, which is also new, so uh, for better Wi-Fi connectivity. So we're going to do some benchmarking here and um, see how this thing performs. I'm going to go ahead and set it up and uh, we'll get rolling. We're going to kick off our synthetic benchmarking using Cinebench R23, starting with multi-core and then moving on to single core. Okay, it's just about done here. And I will tell you that I ran Cinebench R23 uh, twice. So we're going to move over to the multi-core score first. And my first run, I got a 14,757 score. And then on my second run, I got a 14,756 score. Let's move over to single core here. My first run here was 16,000, oh, I'm sorry, 1,687. And then my second run was 1,633. So not bad. Next test, we're gonna uh, check out the disk speed and write and read both sides here. Let's go ahead and start that. So our write speed was around 6,082.2 and our read speed was 4,613.3. Okay, I've unplugged the laptop. I want to do a battery test using GFX Bench Metal. Uh, Manhattan 3.1 is the one we're going to go with, so let's go ahead and start that off. Our battery test Leveraging Manhattan 3.1, we got a long time performance of 7,431.56 frames at 119 uh, frames per second, give or take. And then battery lifetime playing that game uh, is 186.933 minutes, which works out to about a little over 3 hours and 11 minutes, give or take. We're going to do a high level test that's with uh, GFX Bench Metal uh, it's graphics, and uh, we're going to start with Aztec Ruins High Tier. So let's go ahead and click the start button. Okay, for Aztec Ruins High Tier, we got 7,729.2 frames, and that came out to 120.205 frames per second. All right, we're going to do uh, the next benchmarking using 3D Mark. Wildlife Extreme, I'm gonna hit start here. 
All right, our uh, results for Wildlife Extreme, our overall score was uh, 17,834 with an average frame rate of 106.8 FPS. And you can check out the performance monitoring, battery percentage, and our score versus all devices, 99% better results from, uh, your score is better than 99% results from other devices. That's good news. All right, we're gonna run Geekbench 5 here. We're gonna start out with the CPU benchmark. All right, our results uh, for our CPU benchmarking is 1,949 for the single core score and then 15,344 for the multi-core score. I'm gonna scroll down here so we can look at these scores in more detail. Here's a single core performance. And you can slow this video down to Take a closer look. Multi-core performance. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test out the graphics performance here. I'm gonna run this. The graphics core, we got a 71,914. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here so you can get a better look in more detail. Okay, we're gonna run Shadows of the Tomb Raider, internal benchmarking tool. Uh, we have it on ultra settings at 16, 10 aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and run this guy. Okay, so this is where the fans started to kick on a little bit and we're getting around 45 to 50 decibels. I wanna check the temperatures as well. And it looks like we're getting right above, right around the top of the keyboard there and the bottom of the screen. It's looking like around between 42 and 40, uh, 44.5 Celsius, I would say. Yep. We'll get up a little higher, it gets even hotter. So on ultra settings, we got an average FPS of 105. I'm gonna run this on high and medium and just give you the scores at the end. Okay, on high settings for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we got an average of 114 FPS. We're gonna go medium settings and then uh, we'll move on. All right, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on medium settings, we got an average FPS of 121. So pretty good. Okay, the M2 Max MacBook Pro uh, for 2022. Uh, I think we're done uh, as far as this video is concerned. I still wanna do some video editing and uh, do some uh, benchmarking around that. Um, so we'll post that as soon as possible. But I, I can tell you based on what I know so far, if you have the M1 Mac, 16 inch M1 Max, or maybe even the M1, uh, Pro uh, 16 inch or 14 inch. I'm not necessarily sure it's worth the price of admission for the M2 uh, to ditch that laptop and go for the new bright and shiny uh, M2 MacBook Pro. I think if you have anything um, previous to those versions, the M1 version, then I would definitely start looking at uh, the M2 or even looking out on the refurbished website to see if there's an M1 available uh, for purchase. So anyway, uh, there you go. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this from Tech Buzz Hike, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it, helps the channel. Not only that, it gives us an opportunity to bring more videos like this to you. Until next time.